Hello, this is Dr. B, and we are doing the Concord Consortium Smart Graphs Lab describing velocity. Imagine you are a TV sports commentator for a major race. What techniques could you use to describe the action to your audience? Or maybe you haven't had a lot of experience watching races on TV, but you might have had experience with something like this, a little mini race car gliding down the track. And you know, maybe you were playing with a sibling or a friend or a cousin and um, you were talking about your cars. What words would you use to talk about um, how the cars were moving on your track? Um, some of the words you could use to create a full sentence might be fast or velocity or faster or acceleration. I'll leave it up to you. Um, to choose some words you want to describe how a car is moving and write a complete sentence. Let's go to the next screen here. So how can we describe velocity? We can click the start button here to watch the car's journey. We can click stop and reset to pause and replay the motion multiple times. So let's do that. It's just kind of sitting there for a while and then it starts to move a little bit. In the area below, describe the motion of the car. Try to use as many keywords from the word bank as possible. So, I will let you use as many words as you can use, but I'm going to use some of the tougher ones. Um, the car remains stopped. That's close to stopping. And then accelerates the change in velocity is acceleration. You can write your own sentence for this. Don't use mine. So here we are on page three. We want to start the animation again and observe the resulting time position graph for the car's motion. So the car is just sitting still and we can see that the velocity is zero, then it's moving slowly, and then the slope increases as it moves more quickly. Let's reset it and watch it again. So the car is moving slowly, or stop, the velocity is zero, then it moves slowly, and then it takes off moving more quickly, it accelerates to a different velocity here. And we can see the position change more quickly in that increased slope. So we are gonna click to where we wanna label, and we're gonna describe these three areas of the graph. So we can double click here and say, uh, standing still or stopped. We can click here and say, moving slowly. And we can click once here and double click on the label to get moving more quickly more velocity. So now we need to figure out the slope of the line. The slope of the line between zero and three is really easy. The car is not moving, so um, the rise over the run in the graph is zero. The velocity is zero, the movement is zero, so the slope is zero. And we're correct on that one. The slope between three and six, and eventually we're gonna have to compute between six and 10, um, takes a little bit more work, and I'm going to explain that um, on another page. 
So here we are in Figma. I pulled the screenshot of the graph and we're in Figma now so we can kind of draw on it and interact with it a little bit. And so we can compute slope by finding the rise or the vertical distance traveled of the line. So this is the rise for three to six. And this is the run. It's the horizontal distance traveled on the graph. And we know we can look at this immediately and know the run is one, two, three, because it's three tick marks or three blocks on the graph. So we know the run is three. And let's get our rise. Let's read the graph here. This is the five line right here. I'll draw a dotted line on it. And we know the dot is just a little bit above the five line, so that let's call that six. So the slope for this first segment, or this second segment from three to six seconds on the graph, the slope is equal to six, the rise, minus or over three, the run. So six divided by three equals two. And that's two meters per second because because our vertical unit here is meters so that's the 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 unit for rise and the unit for run is seconds here that's the horizontal uh unit so we have rise over run we have meters over seconds so our slope is in meters per second. Uh, we can just report the slope without units here. We can put two in and we are correct. Awesome. Make sure you show your work um, if you're doing this on a lab sheet. What is the slope of the line between six and 10 seconds? Well, let's go back to Figma so we can do some calculations. So here's our slope for the um, segment right here. Now we're working on the slope for this third segment here. It looks like the car is moving a little bit faster because the, that, that line is a little bit steeper and that gives us a hint about how fast the, curve is, the car is going. So in this case, we, I drew a triangle here um, across the bottom of the line and up the side of the line. And this part of the triangle is the rise, and this part of the triangle is the run. Again, run is easier to calculate, so we're gonna look at that first. That's one, two, three, four seconds, because it's four boxes, and each box on the bottom represents one second. So four seconds is our run, or our vertical, or excuse me, our horizontal, uh, calculation here and our rise our the vertical distance traveled by the line um, we have to look at the graph again this line right here if I look over here is 45 and it's just a little bit above 46 are uh, the points at 46 if I look at the bottom of the graph here if I drew a better line here it would look like it was right here which is 6 so in order to find the distance between 6 and 46, I need to subtract. So I take 46 minus 6 equals 40. And we know that unit is meters. So we have 40 meters. And now we have our rise. So we can compute rise over run. We have 40 meters over four seconds so that equals 10 meters per second and like my um, prediction i thought the car must be moving faster here and we also saw that in the animation the steep the slope of the line is steeper so we know the car is moving faster or has more velocity so we know now because we took 46 minus 6, we found the vertical distance, that's the rise, 
and we also calculated the run and we uh, divided um, 40 by 4 to get 10 meters per second. Woohoo! The velocity time graph shows the car's velocity over time. How does the position versus time graph, that's where the car is, relate to how fast it's moving? So position versus time is where the car is in space, and velocity versus time says how fast it's moving. Let's look at these, and you can write your own description here. Some of the similarities are when the car is stopped, the position stays at zero. And because the car is stopped, the velocity also stays at zero. So this is a really easy part of the velocity graph to draw. The car has a constant speed from three seconds to six seconds, and a constant velocity means a flat line on the velocity. So constant velocity is a straight line on a position versus time graph and a horizontal line on a velocity versus time graph. So that's an important difference. This perfectly smooth straight line um, means a constant velocity on the position versus time graph where here a straight line means constant velocity. Same here. Um, this is a, we know this is a larger slope, so it's a bigger velocity. And we see that here on the velocity versus time graph, it's on the positive side of the slope. So if I had to write one similarity or one difference is I would say position versus time graphs tell where the car is and velocity tells you how fast it is moving. You can find some similarities and there are definitely more differences. So don't use my answer. So let's look at this um, velocity versus time graph. How can you tell if a car is stopped? Well, we just discussed that. We said if a car is stopped, its velocity is zero. So if we look on this graph, here is zero, and there is the velocity uh, line right there. So the, it doesn't tilt up to the right. It doesn't tilt to the left. It's horizontal and zero. It's definitely not the velocity isn't positive or negative because it's standing still. Okay, next one. The position time graph of the car's motion displays in the, our top window, so this is where the car is. This is how fast it's moving. How do the labels describing motion compare in the two graphs? So you can write about standing still and how the velocity is zero. When it's moving slowly, the velocity is a uh, smaller number than when it's moving more quickly. And I'll let you answer that one. So if we look at another type of motion, this is a car going backwards, back to its starting position. And when things move backwards or they move in a direction opposite of forwards, whatever we decide that to be, um, their position is um, shows negative velocity or a slope down to the right. If you look at the line going from left to right, it's sloping downward. And that means it has negative velocity, which uh, means it's moving in the negative direction in this case. Let's reset it and watch it one more time. So the position is changing over time, and that position is changing from 35 to zero. So we know it's moving backwards. That's a hint for what should go on here. When we click Start, we see the car move backwards, and we see a line with a uh, constant slope. And when we see that constant slope, a nice straight line, we know that's constant velocity. We need to sketch the velocity versus time graph for the motion down here. 
Um, to sketch, we're going to click a point. We want to start and um, then click each point where you want your sketch to continue. If you mess up, you can just hit reset right down here and I'll let you make the graph. Remember the car is moving in the negative direction. So what does that mean for velocity? So how does my graph of velocity compare to the actual graph? Well, I did okay. My line wasn't perfectly flat, but um, it was a little slopey, but I meant for it to be at negative four because I knew the car was moving in a negative direction. So that would result in a negative velocity. So you can see it's below the zero here. It's in the negative part of the graph. So when a car moves backwards towards the starting line, what is the velocity? Is it positive, negative, zero, positive and then becomes negative, or negative and then becomes positive? You decide. So here we see a velocity versus time graph with different segments labeled here. The different segments uh, represent um, where the car was stopped, where it was moving quickly, where it was moving backwards, and where it was um, starting to move backwards and where it was moving backwards. So we need to choose the segment that describes where the object was moving forward with a constant velocity. Forward would indicate that um, a particular part of the graph and constant velocity would indicate another shape on the graph. So you decide, pause the video and answer the question. So here we have the same graph, but a different question. This is this time we have to choose the segment in which the velocity time graph um, describes where the object was stopped. So I'll let you decide which one which part, which segment A, B, C, or D, or E, is the one where the object or the car was stopped. So we've made it to the last question. Which of these representations can you use to describe the velocity of an object? We need to choose the best answer. Would a position timetable tell us uh, how the car was moving? Um, or describe the velocity? Would a velocity timetable tell us about velocity? Would words such as constant, fast, slow, stopped, forward, backward, or changing um, best describe our velocity? Would we want two of the above choices or more than two of the above choices? I'll let you make your decision. Thanks for watching.